Hi, Tom Lyle here, experienced marksman. I want to wish a happy new year to everyone at uh, Pilgrim Film and Television, Great TV Casting, uh, the History Channel, and everyone responsible for producing the new show, Top Shot, for which I am a candidate. Okay? Uh, I first was introduced to weapons, uh, guns, when I was four years old, believe it or not. That's right. <laughs> my first gun was, uh, my, got, my dad bought me, guess what? The Daisy Red Rider BB gun. You know what? Never shot anybody's eye out either. <laughs> now, I am originally up, uh, born in Baltimore City. I uh, grew up there primarily, Washington, D.C., New York. And you wonder about a city boy. What's a city boy doing with uh, such uh, gun expertise? Well, uh, my parents were originally from the country, West Virginia, Virginia. So a lot of relatives had a lot of farmland. I spent many a wonderful summer uh, visiting relatives, grandparents, etc., in West Virginia, Virginia. Now, what do you do when you're not? Uh, Checking on the moonshine or uh, tipping cows. Just joking about the moonshine and tipping cows. Shooting. Everybody in the country likes to do target shooting. So my progression from the BB gun I was up to a uh, pellet, uh, Crossman pellet uh, pistol. Uh, then 22s. By the time I was seven years old, I was shooting high powered rifles. Okay, and it just went on from there. As I got older, I joined gun clubs and uh, did some, uh, you know, local competition that sort of thing. I'm a former U.S. Army paratrooper. You know what you do in the army? Shoot a lot of guns. I was an instructor with the uh, M14, give my age away there, because later we went to the M16. Uh, the sidearm we used was the uh, model uh, 1911 Colt 45 at the time. Now, the, the one the Army issued was not actually that accurate, but we actually didn't have the competition per se, or they didn't qualify with that. We also qualified with the uh, M60 submachine gun. Of course, that was just laying down what we call a zone or cone of fire, blowing up war barrels. That was fun. The old M79 grenade launcher, I love that baby. And a variety of other weapons. Uh, now, since then, for competition, I always liked the 45. Um, what I use in bullseye competition, this is, oh, safety also teach gun safety. Whenever you're showing someone a weapon, you show them, and before someone shows you a weapon, you make sure it's not loaded. The only way to do that is you lock the slide open and the clip is removed. And you never, ever point a weapon at anything you don't intend to shoot, even if you know it's unloaded. It's just a matter of etiquette and just good safety. All right, look at this baby. This is sweet. You're looking at around $1,200 retail. Out of the box, it's accurate enough to start competition with bullseye competition. This is the uh, model 1911 Colt Trophy Gold Cup. It is sweet. It just fits in the hand. It's great. Oh, you can get customized pistol grips with it, but this is actually pretty good as it is. Now, uh, also in bullseye competition, use a small caliber, a 22. And this is sweet. This is Smith & Wesson Model 41 in a 22. And notice the nice grips on this baby. Oh, sweet. Once again, slide is locked open. It's not loaded. Clip is removed. Okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about now. Oh, actually, you can use for, depending, there's a lot of different types of competition. You have, you have action pistol shooting. You have combative. You have bullseye. There's a variety of things. So you need different weapons for different competitions. Uh, you also are allowed to use optical sights in many competitions as long as they're not magnified. Okay? This is a Ruger 22 target pistol. Sweet. Nice heaviness, this heavy barrel. Once again, slide is locked open. It's not loaded. Magazine is removed. Okay, for safety. Right? <clears throat> Don't want to shoot yourself in the foot or anything. Now, uh, this has a optical sight on here. Not magnified. has a floating red dot in there, which makes it a lot easier for quick shooting and competition. Okay? And I have another one here in a revolver. Now, when you're showing a revolver, what do you do? You have the slide open. This happens to be a uh, Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum, all right, which is nice for, for silhouette uh, target shooting and things like that, okay? I'm talking a little fast because there's a lot of things I want to cover here. A uh, couple of my other favorites here. This is, was formerly one of the most powerful handguns. You remember the old Dar Dirty Harry movies? 44 Magnum. This happens to be uh, a Desert Eagle. Very nice. Just fun shooting. Now, yeah. one of the most powerful handguns in the world I happen to have in my collection. Oh, I will mention this. On my collection, everything is legally registered with the state and federal, and I keep everything safely locked in vaults at a private gun club I belong to. I would not keep these in my home. I don't want a chance of someone breaking in and, you know, end up being an illegal gun. I keep one weapon for self-defense, and that's locked in a uh, vault that only I can open. Okay? Uh, this is a 354 Casol, 50 caliber baby, about reaching out, touching someone. Oh, let me share a music story with you. Oh, you cannot shoot this on indoor ranges. It's, too, it's just too large a caliber, too powerful. Okay? I mean, this is a, literally a hand cannon. I was in an outdoor range shooting this uh, a few years back, and it, 
you would think it have a lot of recoil. It actually doesn't. The barrel is ported, and the weight of this and the design absorbs the recoil. At least it doesn't bother me anyway. So I'm an old weight lifter too. Uh, I want to say seven, eight lanes down after I finished on the range. And, uh, an elderly gentleman, a lot of work myself, came out and he said, man, he says, I was on a destroyer. He says, you were thrown out of blast wave there. He says, that was sounded like one of the big guns that I, that I was on a destroyer. And it does throw out a tremendous blast. This is an interesting note there. So reach out there 100 yards plus and hit targets if you want to. Okay, now, back to uh, my bio and background. Uh, after I completed my military training, I had two other passions other than, well, I have a lot of passions, but two other passions mainly other than uh, weapons, or like, uh, I should say, uh, marksmanship, handguns, rifles. Oh, I'll tell you a little bit about my other ones here, too, in a moment. Uh, I uh, enjoyed uh, acting, started in elementary school, and physical fitness. So I went back to college, got my undergraduate degree from Towson University, physical education and theater, and then graduate degrees from Indiana University in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. I have a Master of Science degree uh, with honors. Uh, then I went into the health club, wellness, fitness business, and about four years ago I was bought out of the corporate buyout. Kind of early retirement, so I went back to full-time acting. So I'm an actor, announcer, aspiring TV show host, and then, <laughs> uh, what else can I say? Oh, happily married, 37 years to the same woman. Actually, my 35-year-old uh, son is operating the camera, Eric, right now. Uh, you're looking probably, you've been married 37 years? I know. They take my son and I for brothers. Believe that, I'll tell you another one. Well, you remember years ago, Jerry Lee Lewis married his cousin in uh, Louisiana when he was 13. Well, my wife and I aren't related, but we got married in Louisiana when I was 10 before they raised the age of 13. Okay, I do a little amateur stand-up comedy, too. I try to. <laughs> okay, what else can I say? Um, oh, I do, uh, to something with my acting, because you know, every tell people you're an actor, they say, what's your real job? I just still do some personal training. I also train, this is interesting since you do produce uh, some of the other shows, that uh, I am a warrior. I also uh, participate in Krav Maga. I train with the Israelis in, uh, in close quarters, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Here's something interesting. I can, unarmed, uh, take out four, maybe five armed men. Now what we would do is the leader would have their weapon drawn and loaded on me. The other four will have their weapons holstered, okay? I will disarm, disable the front man and shoot everybody before they can draw. As if for bragging, you know, one man whistle a little bit. But it might be something interesting. But that's marksmanship. But well, we'd have to use, I guess we'd have to use some kind of paint gun or something. Okay. Um, now, um, oh, a couple other things. You take a military weapon, and if you uh, have it worked on, you, you can make it more accurate, like they did with the uh, Model 1911. Uh, the actual, the original M16, which was made strictly as an assault weapon, was not, uh, you notice I have a clip out of this. Oops. Here's the clip. Clip is removed, and we have the slide. I open that, show you that it's not loaded. Okay? Uh, this is a competition Colt uh, Sports Arised uh, M15. Similar to the M16, except it's heavier, designed for target shooting, and it is semi automatic, not fully automatic. Okay, so it's perfectly legal. And I think I've mentioned before, once again, everything I have is registered with the state and federal. All, right, all legally purchased, okay? This baby is sweet. Now, uh, the M16 was okay, but this is very accurate. Right? And then I have um, what you might call a sniper rifle here. Uh, initially, on, uh, during Vietnam era, the M14s were taken and modified. Some old uh, M1s modified for sniper rifles, but later on they found that uh, Colton and Remington produced better sniper rifles. And I'm sure that's all been covered on the History Channel. One of my favorite. Glad to suck up a wet. <laughs> oh, now, why do I like to shoot? People say, geez, Tom, you know, um, it's not politically correct, is it? Well, first of all, what's not politically incorrect about it? I don't play golf. If you are play chess or any other type of skill, uh, activity, shooting is like that, okay? The satisfaction of trying to shoot a tight group if you don't bullseye shooting or competition shooting, hitting the targets. It's relaxing, it's enjoyable. Hey, guys like to shoot things, most guys. Targets. I'm not really into hunting or shooting animals. Not that I have a problem with it. Uh, also, what else can I think? Oh, I'm also an archer. 
and I'm ambidextrous. I can shoot a left-handed or right-handed. I can shoot a bow left or right-handed. That's something I trained with some of my uh, special forces training was in the service. Okay. Uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, consider me a candidate for uh, the uh, marksmanship um, top shot uh, channel. Uh, oh, I work out every day. I know there's a lot of conditioning involved there. I can swim, I can run, I can jump, I can climb. And uh, why do I want to do this? Well, as I said before, I'm an actor. I like the exposure, I'm just being honest. And I want to show that an older guy, like myself, can still get out there and compete with the young guys. Okay, Tom Lau here. Thank you very much.